Hi guys, Chili Freak here. I wanted to make an update video because a lot of stuff has happened and I want to share it with you guys. So, the first thing I want to talk about is the build I've been playing around with, which is a Wretch Slayer, uh, currently level 91. Uh, secondly, I want to talk about some simple tips and tricks you can use how to get currency, basically, uh, for endgame so that you can buy the gear that you want. And finally, I want to discuss one of the most efficient ways of farming an endgame, which is via shaped strands. So, let's get into the first topic of this video, which is the Wretch Slayer. Uh, it basically utilizes the synergy between two items, the Vessel of Inkter unique flask, which basically gives you insane amount of lightning leech, uh, which we can easily convert our physical damage into. And uh, the Wretch basically applies 200% of our life leech as chaos damage. Uh, let me just say that maybe I was at level 88 until I actually could purchase both the Wretch and Vessel of Inkter. Uh, up till that, I cycloned. I'm still cycloning, but uh, now it's going a lot more efficient. Generally, as long as you make sure that your Vinctor has charges, you you can take down anything. Breach Lords, uh, beyond bosses that might spawn, and all the fun stuff that has uh, come with the Legacy League. So now I want to discuss some of my personal preferences for this build, because, you know, it's like that with every build, you have your own way of doing it. So I'll open my inventory and we can actually see that I am running a 6-link Brain Rattler with a Calm's Heart. And this is to maximize my life, which is 7.6k at the moment. And I'm pretty happy with that actually, I've never had that much. And then on my rings, I've tried to get as much life and res as possible, also accuracy rating. Gloves, I've looked for life and res, and attack speed I actually managed to get on this one. And boots life and res, but also the enchant mod, which is increased critical strike chance if you haven't crit recently. And this is important because I have very low base crit chance and I'm running elemental overload. And without this mod, it's very rarely that you'll ever proc it. So those boots are very handy. And then of course, in the cyclone setup, I'm running uh, melee damage on full life, melee physical damage, weapon elemental damage, physical to lightning and elemental focus. And the Physical to Lightning and Brain Rattler is enough to get 100% uh, Physical to Lightning conversion. And that's important because you want the Vinctor to have an effect, right? Uh, so, without or besides the Vinctor, I'm running uh, Anti-Shock Quicksilver, Overflowing Chalice to keep the charges up on my Vinctor, Lion's Roar to uh, get some more damage and some Physical Damage Reduction, and of course an Insta Life Pot with Anti-Bleed. And uh, that's about it for my gear. Uh, I think we can talk about some of the auras I'm running, because that's definitely personal. I'm running a Warlord's Mark on Blasphemy to make sure that when I run out of Vinctor charges, I still have some mana leech left. And that's basically not necessary, because if you clear fast enough, you won't need it. But uh, I guess I'm somewhat of a slow clearer sometimes, and I just want to pick up the loot and, you know, Oh no, my Vinctors ran out, I don't have another go, and you know, Warlord's Mark is there for that. Uh, and then we have Herald of Ash, uh, because uh, you can use Elemental Proliferation with it. And that's very handy, because since the AoE nerf, you don't kill everything while going through a pack with Cyclone. But you can burn through everything, because the burning spreads with Elemental Proliferation. And then of course we have a movement skill, which is Leap Slam, coupled to Fortify and Faster Attacks. Um, and uh, I think that's about it, actually. Uh, if you want more details about the build, you can always check out the Endless Wretch Guide, which is, uh, I'll post a link to that in the description. And of course, you can check out my account page on pathofexile.com. So let's instead talk about the second topic, which is basically how do you get currency to make a build like this? Because, as I said, it was quite a struggle. However, it's not impossible. It's far from, actually. I'd say that one of the most efficient ways of actually getting currency is using chaos recipes. Maybe not when you're, you've come as far as I have, but definitely in the beginning. So how do you do chaos recipes? I think most of you know, but I'll explain it anyways. So basically, when you have one unidentified rare piece for every gear slot, uh, you can sell that for two chaos. A very efficient way of getting currency because rare unidentified drop all the time and it's not really worth identifying them. Now the recipe works 
so that if the item level is above 75, you'll actually get regals instead of chaos, but they're worth the same, so you can just convert it into chaos, even uh, if you're playing, I think it's tier 7 and above maps. Another way, I think, which is very important, is to sell other types of currency that you don't need till way later. Uh, because when you're still farming currency to get your build together, you have no use for items like breach stones, for example, serval coins, or... I don't know, uh, Val Orbs, Regret Orbs, oh, you might need Regret Orbs, but, you know, currency items that you don't actually use, but are actually worth something, because you'll gather up quite a lot of those, and selling them for Chaos to actually buy the items you want might s give you a surprising amount of currency. Relying on really, really good drops, and that doesn't really work. Uh, the most efficient way of farming is to continuously accumulate currency by trading in currency that you don't need for chaos by not spending too much currency rolling your maps and of course doing chaos recipes let's get into the final topic of this video which is shaped strands the goal with shaped strands is to run shaped strands and more shaped strands and even more shaped strands how do you do that well you have to abuse the atlas mechanics and the simplest way of explaining it is this. So, you're running shaped strands and you want shaped strands to drop. Uh, the only possible tier 11 map that should be able to drop is shaped strand. By not completing any other tier 11, 12 and 13 maps, the only possibility is a shaped strand. We actually modify that a little, so we actually can get shaped atolls as well. Um, but basically, those are the only maps that can drop above tier 10, that is. Of course, everything below tier 10 can drop. You should maximize your chances of getting maps by completing all maps uh, at tier 10 and below, and tier 14 and above, including Shaper and Guardians. This will basically make it possible for you to sustain a pool of strands. So, you might ask yourselves, why would I want to do strands and nothing else? Well, it, it's an awesome layout. You can basically clear it in one and a half minute. Uh, I don't really see why you wouldn't. But of course, if you really, really, really love having variety, you can decide on certain tier level, tier 11 to 13 maps that you really, really like. If you only want to run shaped strands, you have to do it exactly the way I said. So, uh, that was all I had to say in this video. I hope that you learned something and that you enjoyed it somewhat. And of course, uh, I just want to say that we have some stuff planned during this league that will come out eventually, but we want to make sure it's all prepared for the most positive response from you guys. So the key, my friends, is patience. We'll get there. All right. Have a good one, guys.